Let me show you how I replaced the background in a shot from my latest film Sharkbait. In my previous video I showed how difficult it was to shoot this film. This scene is supposed to be out in the middle of the ocean, but unfortunately in this shot we can see the shore behind the boat. Fortunately now we can easily remove and replace the backgrounds from any video using the amazing DaVinci Resolve artificial intelligence tool of Magic Mask. You can do this even if the shot is moving and shaky like is the case in my film. So here inside DaVinci Resolve you can see the, on the left side the shot, the original shot, how it looks. And on the right side here is the finish effect. Uh, here on the bottom, uh, this is in Fusion page by the way, you can see the, uh, all the nodes that I have. So, you know, all the things, different connections as you can see. And it might seem a little crazy, but you know, once you kind of break it down and go step by step, you'll see it's pretty straightforward. On the left side here, this is what we started with. So this is in window one and that says media in and media out is what's going back out to DaVinci Resolve, the, the edit page. And that's in the here on the right window. But anyways, let's go back into the edit page here. And here I have a version of the shot without the effect done. So we're basically just gonna select this and then click Fusion. And that takes us into the Fusion page. When you first enter into Fusion and you have your shot selected, this is how it's gonna look. You're gonna have the two nodes basically, media in node and media out nodes. Uh, so right now you can see this little uh, here, like a little dot here. So these two little dots represent the two viewers. So you can see the right viewer or viewer two is uh, selected for media out. If I select media in, so this is what's coming into uh, Resolve uh, or into Fusion page. If I sele uh, select basically or press one on the keyboard, then you see I'm telling it that I want to view this node on the monitor one. And the first thing maybe I'll do so that we can kind of work with this easier is to apply a simple LUT. The reason is because this was shot in the Sony s 2 profile. It is not the highest quality image. It's shot in 8-bit. Uh, also has a really, you know, a lot of compression, all that stuff. But uh, the biggest problem right now is that we don't see any colors, any contrast. So sometimes it just might be a little harder to see. And, and the reason why this is going to be flat looking once we send it back out to the edit page is because there, or should I say in the color page, is where I actually apply my color grade. So I don't have it applied here. But anyways, in my media in, I'm gonna go here and just select uh, a lot that I wanna use. So let me try maybe, let me try this one, okay. And then the same thing here. I'm gonna go to the media out or the second monitor and I'm also gonna select a lot. So depending on what camera you're working with, you might not need to select a lot or you know, again, depending how you shot it. Uh, but yeah, these are right now basically how these shots look. Now, uh, whatever I put in between these two things, that's where basically all the work is going to happen. So first thing I want to probably do is to track the whole background. Because if you go through this shot, you'll notice that, you know, basically just the camera is really shaky. And I want to replace that background. So in order for me to put our new background, I got to first track it. So I can even go to the first page here. And I'm going to go and select basically and apply a tracker. The way you can apply things is that you have certain tools here already. So you can see like I have the transform tool, merge tool, which I'll show you in a bit uh, what, we're gonna, what you can do with those things. But right now, for example, you can also press shift and then space and that will bring up the select tool kind of a search menu. So I can in here put tracker and you have different trackers. You have a simple tracker, you have a surface planar tracker. In this case, I'm going to choose the planar tracker. Once I have that, I'm going to take the, um, uh, the out or the media out uh, or media in, but the output of it, and I'm going to drag it into here. And now I'm going to select this as in press one so we can view it here in the basically window number one or the left uh, view. And, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of work on it. So. First thing you gotta do is you gotta tell the, the tracker what's sort of like your reference frame. In this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go for the first frame and I'll click set. And then the next thing is uh, you wanna draw basically kind of an area where you wanna be tracking. So I definitely don't wanna be tracking the, the people here on the boat because they're moving. I just wanna track the background. So I'll select something like this. And there. And that should be good enough. And now we can, once we have this selected, we can just click here to track uh, to the right side or to track forward. 
you can see it goes through the whole shot and it tracked it for us. And there, we did a pretty good job. Once we have that, we can basically export a node uh, that, that creates, basically takes all of that information from the tracker. So in here you go create planar transform. So that's our node up here. And now the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to load in a new background. So you can create obviously a background. You could even paint in here using the paint tool. I actually have an image uh, that I basically exported for one of the shots of my film where I do see just a clear horizon. So uh, I'm going to go in here and go VFX stills and here this horizon. So I can just drag and drop it here. So we have now media in two. And you can name these, by the way, this media in one. We know that's our original footage. Uh, media in two is the, the you know our background now, the new background we want to place. And if I press one on the keyboard, I can view it here in the first viewport. So you can see that's how it looks. And uh, now what I have to do is I want to basically apply that on top of this footage, right? So best way to do it is by putting a merge node. So I'm going to take the merge node here. I'm going to drag it in between this, so in between media in and media out. The way you do it is you press shift and when you go over the connections, you see it will just kind of embed itself in between there. And then we want to take media uh, two and want to drag that out of it and to the green part. This is the foreground element. So as you can see, there it is. There's our foreground. Now, of course, the issue is that right now it's not moving, right? We have the shot underneath it moving. But this is not moving. But we have the planar uh, tracker information. Uh, so we can just drag this and shift, like, again, press shift and drag it in between it. Now it's going to be moving. You'll notice. See, its background is moving and kind of following the, the whole shot. So whenever you select a node here on the right side, you'll see the settings for that particular node. So here if we go to the settings tab. Uh, you have option for motion blur. So if I turn that on, it will basically apply the motion blur depending on how fast this thing is moving. So something here, you can already see it. If I turn off, see it becomes sharp, now it becomes uh, blurry. You can, of course, increase that by making the shutter angle larger. So I'm, I'm, I actually do that in this case because this shot this does actually have a lot of motion blur in it. Anyways, that, that looks good. Um, so that, that's not all good, but now the issue is that the sky, this new sky or the background, is not in the right spot. So I want to actually kind of move it up. Uh, another thing maybe I'll do is I'll take our merge node here and I'll go here to the alpha gain and I'll basically make it 50%. I actually got to turn off the, sub, the additive basically blending. But anyways, I'll, I'll do this to 50% so I can kind of see 50-50 uh, our background on this. And in this case, I'm going to go to our media now and I can, for example, you know, press shift again. There's a lot of different ways that you can do the same thing inside Fusion. So I can, for example, press shift space and I can look for a transform node or I have it right here, actually. So if I have this node selected and I click one of these tools, it's going to apply it right afterwards. So I do this and it gives me another node called transform. Now with the transfer node, and I do that before I apply the tracking data, right, in the planar transform node. So in the transfer node, again, on the right side, I have my settings. I could, you know, manually click it there, or I can actually go here and drag it. And I want that horizon to be kind of like more or less, maybe a little bit higher than those buildings somewhere there. That should look good. Now, if I go back to my merge node and change the alpha all the way to 100%, make it additive, then you can see that's how our their new horizon looks. Um, Another thing we for sure want to do is we want to apply some, basically some blurring here, right? So basically we want to apply a mask. And the way we can do that is different ways. But one way probably we best is to just do it right here at the, our media end node. So if I select this and go to the polygon tool, so right here, I click it. You see it, it adds it to this. So I'll start drawing the my polygon here like this. And I'm just going to make it a simple square. We have it up here, but it actually appears because once the planar transfer node basically moves that, right, according to the tracking data, it actually appears in a different spot. So I have to move it here basically according to this shot. So I'll move it somewhere here. Maybe make this go a bit higher. Yeah, somewhere there. 
And now the next thing I want to do is because you'll notice it kind of abruptly, uh, you know, is being applied. So I'm going to go here. This is still in the polygon settings. I'm going to do the soft edge. So just to kind of blur it and blend it in nicely. You know, if I do it, overdo it, you'll start seeing that the city in the back. So I want to kind of do it right before we start seeing the city. So somewhere there, I think it should be good. All right. So now uh, we go to the single view here. If we basically play this shot, this is how it looks. So we have our new horizon and that looks good. Obviously the issue is that we're not seeing now our uh, actors here in the foreground. So basically what we got to do is we got to go back to the original footage um, and we got to now basically cut them out and put them back on top of our composition. There's, there's different ways you can do it. Back in the day you would have to rotoscope it, meaning you would take your you know, polygon, for example, tool and go frame by frame and, and cut them out and put it back on. Uh, you can use Luma key, uh, you know, if you shot it on a green screen, then you, obviously you could use a chroma key, it would be easier. But you could even use a Luma key. But we also have some cool AI tools in DaVinci Resolve now, um, like for example, the uh, Magic Mask. So first I'm gonna create another merge node. I'm gonna take this, because I wanna put this basically after we composite our new background, I'm gonna put it back on top, on top of it uh, our actors. Now I want to basically use the original footage, so there's no need to me bringing in another basically node with the original footage, and that's sort of the cool thing about uh, in DaVinci Resolve or in Fusion in particular working with nodes is, is that you can basically connect the nodes, you know, left, right, center. It's not the same as, for example, the Adobe After Effects where uh, it's basically layer based and whatever goes on top basically covers whatever's underneath it. In this case, it's sort of non-linear in that sense. So now I'm basically going to look for the magic mask. So there it is, magic mask. I'm going to add it here. Once I have it, I'm going to take the out or the output of this node and plug it into here, which is the, the input or the, or the foreground uh, of the merge node. But right now nothing's being applied on top of it because we got to now take this, the uh, output of the, our media in and plug it into the here. Now you see it's showing up basically our original footage is back on there in our media out. Why? Well, because the magic mask is not applied yet. So we'll go and press one. So our magic mask node is showing up in here. And in here, I'm going to just zoom in closer so I can see in more detail. Make sure you have your magic mask node selected. Uh, and then in here, I can, for example, start selecting uh, basically what it is that I actually want to basically include in our mask. So I'm gonna basically go here and click add, and I'm just gonna draw and basically tell DaVinci what it is that I wanna add in this shot. So all of these here, our actors, you know, the whole boat, and there. And as you can see, it already applied it. Now, uh, if you, for example, look at this, you can see it's already now applied back on top of our basically new background. So right away the shot looks good. Now the, it's not perfect and part of it is because we can kind of play around with some of the settings. So we can go here to the mat, we can blur the mat obviously. And I would say in this case you probably want to blur it to a certain point because we want to basically make it look like this really bright background. The sky is kind of, kind of overpowering it and, and this way kind of hiding some of the details on the edges. And I play around sort of with these settings here, you know, obviously that's going to be all dependent on the shot that you're working in. Uh, maybe in here it's a little too much. So here we just basically play around and we can always go back in here afterwards and we can further tweak it. But right now it looks pretty good. Uh, you know, you'll notice there's little like details here uh, where it's, for example, didn't select it very well. Uh, here, for example, in Magic Mask you have a basic setting for faster or better. Now, obviously, this is only being applied to one frame. So as I scroll through the shot, you'll see it's, uh, that effect is no longer visible there. So we'll go back to our frame, which in this case is frame 30. Uh, and I'm just going to basically tell it to track both ways. And I just kind of let it do its thing. You can view it here on the left side. You can see whether it's doing a good job or not. And it's now it's tracked it forward. Now it's going and tracking backwards. And there, I think it looks pretty good. And now we can see basically how our shot looks. 
we right away noticed that you know did a pretty good damn good job definitely way faster than having to uh, rotoscope all this frame by frame especially considering we have 52 frames and i have about almost 100 shots in this film <laughs> where i'm gonna have to do this uh, so definitely this speeds up the process right so magic mask really is magic in some ways but you'll notice there's a few frames where like the buildings that were there are kind of showing up for like a frame or two let me go and find it where it is like for example there and when that happens it's very simple you can go here and again making sure you're in the magic mask node and you can click subtract and in this case you can just tell it okay i don't want you to include this and again you can track it and then here for example on the first frame it also kind of shows up so i'm going to select making sure you know basically you're telling magic mask no, this part I don't want you to include. And we can see there's another frame here where it's again picking up that background there. So I can just quickly select it. And once you go through and kind of clean up any of these mistakes, as you can see, the shot looks way better. Now I can, for example, go in here just so that it doesn't basically the computer doesn't have to recalculate all of the stuff. I can right click, go to cache to disk. And I can basically um, here go lock the, the cache and then go pre-render it because I know I'm not going to be changing this again. And this way it just stays this, you know, the same and I don't have to worry about it now. Now, if this was it, if that's all we had to do in the shot, then as you can see, we'd be finished. But this shot actually has another slight issue. <laughs> and that's the fact that we had a, a guy actually operating the bolt. He was hidden here behind the actors on the, on the, on the bottom of the bolt while the actors were, you know, concentrated on uh, concentrating on actually acting. So in this case, you can see the operator's hand. So basically, I want to erase that and just, you know, basically make it look like his hand is not there. There's different ways of doing it. So here, I'm going to go to my dual view. Um, probably best way is to use our, uh, basically, a paintbrush tool and to actually paint it out, sort of as you would, like, in, um, I don't know, for any photo retouching software using cloning tool. So um, I'm going to create the paint tool or node I'm going to move this node up here and by the way you can move these all around you can as you can see you can zoom in zoom out and so in this case I'm going to take my paint node but I want to input into that obviously the original footage so as you can see I'm again taking the media the, the output of the media in into our paint node I'm going to press one so I can see now the paint node in here um, and I pick a frame, maybe somewhere like in the middle, maybe frame, yeah, this one might be good, frame uh, 25. And I'm going to basically use that as sort of my main uh, frame for sort of painting this out. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to go in here and make sure again you have your paint node selected. And I'm going to select here this uh, simple basically stroke tool. And then in here, you have different things. You can do, you know, an eraser, all this stuff. I'm going to use, choose the clone paintbrush. Uh, and then you can basically just start painting away on it. So uh, which way am I going to do this? So for example, I can do it, uh, like I can, for example, press control. And then while holding control down, I can adjust the size of the brush. Uh, you can adjust, obviously, like here you have the settings for the brush. So you can also do it here. You can adjust the softness. And then the next thing is that by pressing the Alt key, I can basically click, like let's say I want to sample there. And then I'm going to let go of the Alt key and then I'm going to say I want to basically start painting somewhere here. And you can see I can start painting away the hand. Let me maybe make the brush a bit smaller. And like that. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint more of this out because the bolt kind of moves, so the perspective changes. And then later on, I'm going to put back the original edge of this, the, basically the forward edge of this bolt. So I'm going to paint this out here. Maybe even up to here. I'm going to sample a new area here. So as you can see, right in the, in the Fusion page inside DaVinci Resolve, you can even paint on top of your video. Um, and you can, you can paint 
like I said, frame by frame if you wanted to. There's a lot of powerful things you can do. Or in this case, we just want to paint it on one frame. Now, next thing I want to do is because if I start now scrolling, you'll notice that all of that paint work that I did went to waste. And that's because the shot is obviously moving. So I'm going to basically freeze frame this. So the way to do that is uh, by selecting, uh, again, go shift space. I'm going to go to time. And we're going to do time speed uh, tool. So add that. And in the settings here for time speed, uh, I am going to go in here and select or basically type in zero. Now, as you can see, it froze our shot, but basically it's frozen in the wrong moment. And that's because we wanted to do it at frame 25. So I got to adjust the delay here. So I'll just put it in 25. So it jumps to frame 25. So now frame 25 is frozen. So as you can see, our media out is still moving. But here, if we're looking at the time warp in the left window here, uh, as you can see, the shot is completely frozen. And that's okay, because now we can uh, do another tracker on the original footage, and we're going to basically just track this area. So I'm going to create another planar tracker. So track, and go planar tracker, go add. And in this case, I'm actually going to, I can put it in here. I'm going to take the original media and connect it to here. Press one so I can see what's happening here. And we're going to just track this engine. Like, well, maybe the engine and better this bolt here. You want to see how that looks. Maybe let me even go to frame 25. I'm going to have that as our sort of reference frame. And maybe go in here. And again, in our planar tracker, if you select it, we'll set our reference frame as 25. So pressing set. And then we're going to just draw a simple polygon here basically telling it where we want to track. Somewhere there. Okay, and now we can start tracking it. So we'll track forward. And now I'm just going to track backwards. And once we have a nice track, basically, so something that we can attach our image to, uh, the next thing I can do is create the custom planar, planar node. And uh, we have it up here. And we can now uh, basically apply that. Basically take the timeout from the time speed here. And let's go to our reference frame. And I can connect it into our planar node. So if I click this, now if I start moving, you'll notice now this image is starting to move. One thing we can definitely do is we can go into our settings here turn on motion blur, so when it gets like really crazy, like the camera shake, it basically looks blurry like it did in the original shot. So that looks pretty good. Uh, and then the next thing, maybe, is to, we, we want to basically put it now back on top of our original footage here, so we can replace that hand. So I'm going to just zoom in here, and I'm going to create a, a merge node. So click here, we'll drag it in between our last merge node. And I'm going to take the, and you can see, as you can kind of organize your nodes so that they look kind of, you know, your, your workspace looks clean. I'm going to take the out and I'm going to put it into the input or the foreground of this. So now we have that sort of moving along. Now, obviously, the problem with that is it's basically showing the whole thing. So now what I could do is I can, for example, duplicate this planar node, so that tracking information. So just go Control C. And I'm going to paste it here. And I want to basically put a, a, like a mask just around this area because obviously we just want to copy just that area with the hand. So I'm going to go and create a polygon. So here, take our polygon tool, connect it to the input of the transport, and then the output of the planar transport, I'm going to connect it to the mask, uh, which is the blue little you know, triangle of the, our merge node there. Now, right now it's turning C red. It's telling me there's an error because there is nothing basically that we drew under. So I'm going to go back to our frame 25, our reference frame, and I'm going to go in here and here basically paint. And now this mask or this polygon is allowing us basically just to apply it in this area. So it doesn't apply it everywhere else to the image. It just applies it in this area. And maybe, you know, I can move it like this. And I can again. Uh, 
select it, for example, so that it gets softer. Because, for example, if we start moving, if you notice here, it doesn't quite line up. So I can do this soft edge, right? Kind of, kind of blur it out, make the transition a bit nicer. And there it is. Now, one thing you'll still notice is that uh, basically uh, at the end of it all, it still like doesn't align up perfectly, right? Our tracker, I mean, did a pretty good job, but you'll notice it's some spots which starts really moving like crazy. So one thing we can do in there is we can try to retrack it, but in this case, it might just be easier to create basically a transform node. So I'll go in here to our original here or our previous node where we did our painting. And I'm going to uh, apply a transfer node by selecting this. So we have the transform. Uh, let me maybe move these nodes away a little bit so it looks cleaner. So here, our transform, uh, I'm going to basically select it. And I'm going to, on top of that, sort of move our, um, our shot. So I'm going to basically just key all these. So the center, size of it, rotation, in case I need to adjust all those things because it looks good in frame 25. But we, as we start moving, as you can see here, there, it doesn't look good anymore. So let me basically go here and adjust the position. So I can manually, as you can see, grab it here and just sort of move it back into place. So now, as you can see, and I'm automatically creating a key. So there, there maybe starts moving too much, so. And right there, we can kind of see how it looks. And it's already pretty good. Basically, the hand is gone in there. Now, of course, the issue is that this part of the bolt is still missing. So what we can do now is, again, we can take the original footage and we can basically just put it back on top. So uh, I'm going to create another merge node. Just shift and drag and drop it here. And we're going to basically put on top of basically our comp uh, again, original footage, so I'm going to take the original node here and drag it into a green uh, foreground, basically input. So we have that. Now the only thing is we want to create a mask for it, basically the same way as we created a mask for this, and input into here. But we want that mask obviously to also move around along with the shot. So uh, one way you can do this is we can take this planar transform node, we can copy it, take the out from that and put it into the mask here. And then we can create a polygon tool. So I'll click polygon, take the out and put it into input of this, this transform node. And it might actually be helpful here, for example, here to go to media in, so original footage, and click one so we can see it in the left viewer, that basically part. And we can in here make sure you, have, you select your polygon node. And we're going to just trace this. So do this, this. Looks like there's like a little edge there. And then it is going to cut out like this section. And there it is. Now if I scroll it, you can see that basically our polygon, our mask that we created, is moving with the shot, right? And the reason is because we have that uh, original tracking data and now we can just quickly sort of see how it looks. Just make these full screen. So again, I'm going to select our media in, press 1 so we can see it on the left viewport. And on the right viewport here, we have our media out. So as you can see, we have the, the sky basically, or the background has been replaced. Uh, we have the hand here, or the, the operator on the boat here is gone too. So it looks pretty good. Now here in the color page, the cool thing is that uh, the color grade that I have originally applied to it in our color node, uh, which by the way, this is, these aren't still the final colors that, that I'm going to have in the film. But anyways, the color grade that I'm kind of working in with uh, at the time is now being applied to our overall composition, our whole effect. And so that's sort of what I love about Dimitri Resolve is that you can quickly jump in from edit. I can, for example, now throw this in my timeline. I can adjust the in and out points of this shot. I can go to the color tab, I can adjust my colors, and I can at any point go back into my composition and, for example, oh, let's say I want to add birds in the background or something else, I can do all of that. And that's kind of the cool thing. But anyways, this is how our final shot looks right now. Uh, definitely you cannot tell that there used to be a shoreline and a city there behind them. And it looks like there's actually, you know, like they're supposed to be in the film. They're supposed to be out in the middle of the ocean. 
Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you guys leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like me to do on the next video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. But the best thing you can do is actually head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com and subscribe to my newsletter so you stay in touch. Anyways, my name is Tom Antos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.